get involved, whatever your niche is. So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be involved because we're, we'll see to it that we guide you to whatever your passion is. How can someone who is not involved on campus and doesn't have a strong and who does not have a strong knowledge on Greek life set about joining a Greek organization? I would definitely say to talk to us. Um, we are always around, always around. Um, honestly, like I would definitely say to, um, for example, take a, take advantage of opportunities like this. You're at a Meet the Greeks event. We're all around, like basically come up to us, talk to us, have a conversation, we're not gonna bite you. Like, just have a conversation with us, talk to us, and form like friendships. In all honesty, that's what it comes down to. I know within my organization, we basically have a lot of people spread about on campus, we're well-rounded individuals. And get involved, get involved, and basically, again, talk to us, do not be afraid at all. And um, I mean, I remember it's a little bit scary for you to come to events like this, but, Going to events that the chapter holds also um, is definitely a gateway for you to go ahead and build connections with members of that organization itself. So whether it's seminars or whatever events that's going on, definitely attend those events. Because at, at the end of the day, even while everybody's cleaning up, you can go ahead, hey, my name is so-and-so, um, just talk to me a little bit. And that makes stuff uh, a lot easier. Um, I will say this. Remember, we are students just like you. You know, we're no more special, we're no more different. You know, we're just members of these organizations. But we're going through the same things that you're going through. So just approach us and talk to us as you would any other student. Um, be genuine and be real, because it's very obvious when someone is just trying to use you, and I'm sure you guys understand that. Um, and I would say before you do anything, do your research. And I know we say that a lot, um, but truly, Google. Like, really find out why your organization was founded and what principles it was founded on, and then make the decision, like, is this really what I want to do? Because it's a lifelong commitment. It is a lifelong commitment. You don't just do it for undergrad. So um, really just think hard about the decision. I think I pretty much have to piggyback off of everyone. I mean, just come and talk to us. But we're human beings. And I wouldn't even say necessarily just say go talk to someone because you're interested in their organization. Go around and talk to everyone's organization, even if you're not interested. That's another person that you've met, another bond that you formed. You know, someone to look out for you. What's the best way to get to know the members of the Greek organization one likes to be a part of discreetly? I would say the biggest thing is attending events. That's how that's like the first way to tell that you're actually interested in the organization. Again, you guys have to remember, like, at the end of the day, we've been through this process. Like, we've done this before. And again, don't be shy. Come up, talk to us, and basically just don't necessarily come right out and say, hey, I want to be a part of your organization. Don't do that. But definitely just come out and basically just have that conversation. Like, Ask us about certain things, but just make a conversation, like how's your day going, and then we'll reciprocate the same thing. So just have a conversation, a genuine conversation, and let it be heartfelt. Because in all honesty, if you come up to us like on the very first shot, like, hey, I want to be, I want, I want to be a part of this, I want to be a part of that, that's honestly not the best route of going about it. And also, I mean, general body meetings are open to everybody, and um, brothers are definitely involved on campus. So one thing you could definitely do is just find out what they're involved in and just attend a general body meeting, whether it's the Korean Student Association or the BSU or whatever it is. And from that general body meeting, not only are you being involved, but you're also going ahead and um, at, the end of the, at the end of the meeting, you can go ahead and talk to the brother or talk to the, um, to the sister. I just, um, I'll mention something on the discreetness part. Um, it's really not as obvious as one would think it is. Just because you go talk to someone, that is in an organization, it does not look like to everyone else around you that you're trying to become a part of that organization. It looks like you're having a conversation with another person. <laughs> <laughs> At right now, we would like to have our advisors come up and answer a few questions that you guys pose. Um, good evening. My name is Arthur Doctor, and I serve as a graduate assistant in the Office of Greek Life, and I am the MPSC advisor. Um, so the first question was, is there a chapter of Delta Sigma Theta uh, sorority on campus? And currently there is not an active chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, and they will not be eligible to return to Florida State University until fall 2013, upon which they have 
different stipulations and things they have to um, complete before they can become active and eligible to return and take new members. Um, and secondly, is there a difference between pledging and hazing? Um, all nine of our organizations, pledging has been officially abolished and hazing is strictly prohibited. Um, they follow membership intake pro processes. All of them are different, uh, ranging from the different organizations, but uh, pledging is, has been abolished and hazing is strictly prohibited. And uh, if you need more information regarding that, hazing.fsu.edu provides uh, the university stance on hazing and those organizations respective websites uh, have their organization stance as it comes to hazing as well. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Robinson. I'm the Assistant Director of Greek Life here at Florida State University, so it's exciting to see all you here. I'm excited for y'all. Um, the one question that I have in my hand is, will any of the remaining organizations of the Divine Nine be on the yard in spring 2012? Um, what I can tell you is maybe. Um, <laughs> sorry, just trying to be transparent. Um, <laughs> The, the organizations that you see here tonight are the organizations that are active on our campus. Um, we have two organizations that have the ability to be here spring 2012. Um, with that, it takes a lot to start up an organization again. So you may see them around. You may see some advisors around just um, starting to get everybody amped about their organizations coming back. But do I foresee that actually happening, happening and then doing an intake process um, during the spring, absolutely not. But if you want to know more information, I'm in my office Monday through Friday, so just come and ask. Thanks. Thank you, advisors. To the panel, what are the requirements for joining your chapter? Let's start from the left. Um, requirements for joining my chapter. Um, you need to have at least a 2.5 GPA, cumulative GPA. Um, other than that, we just, we just look for, you actually have to be a student of Florida State. <laughs> let, me, let me put that out, because it does happen, and we do have ways to check that also. So do know that. Um, and of course, you have to be a male as far as my organization. But other than that, we just look to see that you're someone who's a, a hardworking individual, and you love our organization. Okay, um, I just want to be a little more specific. Um, you are initiated into the sorority um, through an undergraduate chapter. Um, I always like to make that distinction because some people get caught up in being in the chapter, but at the end of the day, if you are brought into Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, you are a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, and you are just in active in a certain chapter. So make that clear. Um, very general requirements, um, GPA 2.5. Community service, there's a certain number of community service hours. Um, basically, if you want some more specifics, I'll be in the back and I'll be more than willing to um, answer them. Um, they're also, you can go on the internet and find them. So. Um, yeah, requirements for my fraternity, uh, obviously, are 2.5. There's also a certain amount of community service hours you must have. Um, also, uh, it's on a person to person basis. Like, we have to, like, you have to show qualities of, of being a, like a brother, like we don't have any fakeness in our chapter, like so you have to you have to really really like the people in the chapter in order to come to the Jump line or uh, we probably can not even consider you. <laughs> <laughs> um, our GPA requirement is a two point five and And a full-time student at Florida State, if you're a transfer student, you have to have at least 30 hours at FSU. So if you transfer from like TCC, you have to at least have like 30 hours here to be considered. I mean, um, of course you gotta be a student at Florida State, as was said, 2.5 is the bare minimum. However, we do seek um, for more than that. Um, aside from that, I mean, some of the things that we look for is that you're involved. Um, at the end of the day, this is a social fraternity. So we definitely look for someone to be involved, um, and that's about it. The requirements for my chapter, again, the bare minimum is a 2.5, but again, we tend to look for a lot of um, young men that typically excel that requirement. Um, community service involvement, academic involvement, um, and they, again, like, like he said before, this is a social fraternity as well. So we definitely want to make sure that you guys are actively involved on campus and everything like that. But not saying that you have to be involved to join a member, to be a member of the chapter. Um, one thing I wanted to add that no one touched on here um, is the mandatory interest meetings. 
also known as MIMS, which are hosted by Greek Life. In order to join any of these organizations or MGC, you have to attend one of these meetings and sign in, and your name goes in a database, and that's just the first step, literally the first step to join any of these. What is your favorite part of being in your chapter? Um, my favorite part of being a chapter is it's kind of funny. It's actually chapter meetings. Um, I feel like it's I don't know. I feel like um, okay, but that's okay. That's my opinion. Um, I definitely say chapter meetings because in all honesty, we're so involved and on campus. And honestly, chapter meetings is one of the main times when I get to see all my brothers together, all in one central. <laughs> Yeah. In, one, in one central location, and at times like we do fight, we do argue, but at times we come to chapter with a common goal, and we have like we'll come in there with like one idea, and as being a part of the chapter, we just had like last line that came through and seeing the Neo fights, and as well as my library that came through and putting us together, like it's definitely a great thing because we come together, we come with like all these crazy ideas, like because we're so different, we all we all contribute something different. And seeing everyone with their crazy ideas, we put it, putting it all together is definitely what makes us so unique and so dynamic on this campus. Um, my favorite part of my chapter is the support system and the way that we just always have each other's backs. Um, it's not just about your line, brother, but it's the chapter overall. Um, from, I mean, just recently my car was in the shop. I did not have to catch the bus or anything like that because the brother always had me like, yo, you need a ride here, there. And you know, part of that is just being part of Theta Eta. Um, and even from organizations that whether I want to do something in it, for example, the Korean Student Association, I can hit up a, a brother from way back and they're giving me pointers and everything else. And that's the support system.